What's up everybody? This is the third and final video in a three-part series on how to get started with the FreeCAD part design workbench. In this video, we're going to look at a drawing that's available on the FreeCAD wiki and create a simple part using a master sketch while incorporating best practices to make sure we have a stable model that will be easy to edit later. So let's get started. First thing I want to show you is where I got this part. Um, it's on the FreeCAD wiki. Um, basic part design tutorial 0 0.17. Um, 0 0.18 is actually what's available, but that's okay. This the tutorial will still work. Um, you'll notice they actually have a tutorial for this part here. This tutorial is a little bit different than how we're going to be doing it. We're going to be using a master sketch. This tutorial actually doesn't use a master sketch. Um, so a little bit different. Uh, I think that the master sketch a little bit more stable if you want to come back and edit the model later but uh, this is this is where I got the part from if you want to go and check it out and try and go through this tutorial and, and see how the different tutorials are different uh, feel free so I've got the picture here and we will open up FreeCAD create a new part let's navigate to our part design workbench So the first thing I want to talk about is the strategy on how we're going to create our master sketch. Uh, for this particular part, we're going to actually look at the silhouette of the part as if we're staring straight at this side. So we're going to capture all of these lines here, um, and then we'll project these lines going back for this hole to this front face. So the first thing we want to do is kind of draw, uh, looking at the left side, what our part is going to look like here on kind of its profile. So let's do that by starting a new sketch. And then we want to look at the left side. So let's see, we'll use our navigation tool here. Left side, that looks like that's the YZ plane. So we'll click OK. It actually transformed us to the right side. It's not a big deal. So we'll start by drawing this kind of basic shape here. And to do that, we will use our polyline tool. So we got kind of something that looks like this, draw a straight line, coming over, up. Got a little plant there. And now we can start adding some constraints. Uh, the first thing I want to do is get it centered on the origin. A quick way to do that would be to select the two opposite vertices, select the center origin, and add a symmetric constraint. Kind of transforms our, our shape a little bit. Um, and now we can start adding some dimensional constraints here. So it looks like we've got the bottom is 26 millimeters. So we'll come up here, we'll click our horizontal dimension tool. Click the line and 26 millimeters. Drag this down a little bit. And then we've got a height of 21. But we're going to capture this too. So we're going to project this to the front. So let's do 21 plus 5. And this is a cool opportunity to show you guys how powerful uh, FreeCAD is. So if we do a vertical constraint here, we can actually do the math in the length box. So if we do 21 plus 5, and you can see it gives us a dimension of 26 millimeters right there. So now we got a, a top piece right here. This is 5 millimeters. So we're going to add a horizontal constraint here. Make that 5 millimeters. And then what else do we have here? Doesn't give us much. We've got this 16.7 height vertical dimension right there. So we'll add that in, vertical, 16.7. And now we have to figure out where to place this, where we don't really know what this dimension is. 
But if we look, we can see that it comes from this point straight down to this corner right here. So we want to make that kind of just come straight down to this corner. What we can do is create a line, make a coincident point right there, bring it down to the vertice. And then what we can do is select both of these lines here and add a parallel constraint. That's right here. Don't get these mixed up. Sometimes I get them mixed up. There's equal and there's parallel. Parallel is kind of at a little angle. But once we click that, then look at that. Our sketch is fully defined. But we don't have everything here yet that we want. Right? We still have a couple more lines because we want to project this line to this face and this line to this face for this hole. We want to capture all of these kind of different features in our master sketch. So if we look, we've got one that's going to be 7 millimeters from the bottom, and then the next line is going to be 17 millimeters above that. So let's grab our line tool. Let's make sure we capture those, those constraints, the fix onto and horizontal constraints. And then we're going to click both of these vertices right there and right there. And then we're going to add a dimensional constraint here. This is fix the length of a line. So when we click that, then we can make that seven millimeters. But notice we didn't go back to all green. We're not, we don't have all of our degrees of freedom. So something's going on here. So look at that. I, we actually didn't get the constraint over here. So we'll click this vertice. We'll click this line, and then we'll click the fix on to. And there we go. We'll make another line for the top of our hole up here somewhere. Make sure we get those constraints. We got both fix on to constraints there. And then we want to do another dimensional constraint from that point to that point, 17 millimeters. All right, looking good. Our master sketch is almost done. There's one last line we have to make, and that is this line right here, this height right here that's 21 or 5 down from the top. So we'll grab our line tool. We'll create a line, make sure it gets that horizontal constraint. We're fixed onto both sides. If you move it, you can see that we've got those constraints captured. And we'll do a vertical from there to there, and we'll make that five. And there we are. We have our fully constrained master sketch that we are now ready to manipulate into a model. So now that our master sketch is complete, we can start creating our model. So let's close out this sketch here. And we will make sure that our sketch is not selected in our model tree. And we are going to start a new sketch. We're going to choose the YZ plane as our base plane. Select OK. And this is going to be the first part of our extrusion or the first solid piece of our part. So if we look back at our drawing, we can see that We've got kind of a, a piece right here, and if, if we just had, if that was just solid all the way, you didn't have these features in the middle, um, you'd be able to cut these other parts out of it. So that's kind of the strategy we're going to take here. Uh, so we're going to look at these four, excuse me, these one, two, three, four, five, six corners, and we're going to create this, this shape as our first solid piece. So to do that by using the master sketch, you can't really click your sketch or select it or anything while you, you're in a different sketch. So we have to somehow get this geometry into our new sketch. And to do that, we'll come up here and we'll use this tool. It says Link External Geometry. So when we click that, we'll notice that now we can select parts of this sketch. And it's really important that you don't select the line. We want to select the vertices here. And when you select the vertices, sometimes it's hard to see but you'll notice that that dot will pop up. That vertice point will appear. You kind of got to play with it sometimes to get it. 
but you'll be able to. And so once we have all of those points, now those points are linked to our master sketch, and our master sketch is dimensioned. So those points do have dimensions, or are dimensioned in space. So next thing we'll do is come here and select our polyline tool. And we're gonna go ahead and connect these. And what you're gonna see is our, our model or our sketch is instantly gonna turn green because everything is already defined. There are no degrees of freedom because we're attaching it to that external geometry from our other sketch. So when we come here, it's, we should get a fully defined sketch here. Now we will close out of our, our, our new sketch. We're gonna make sure that our, our new sketch is selected and we're going to click this button up here. This is the pad feature. So you can see now we have a three-dimensional shape. This three-dimensional shape is 39 plus seven plus seven long, or I should say deep. So we come back to our tasks pane. And we are going to enter that in here. Again, we can just do the math. If you're lazy like me and you just don't want to do the math in your head, 39 plus 7 plus 7. But notice it's protruding from one end of our sketch. Now, if you look at the sketch, it's symmetric along this plane right here that's in the center. And whenever your model has symmetry, it's really, really good practice to capture that in your design. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this right here, symmetric to plane. And that's going to put our sketch right in the middle of our three-dimensional object. And we're going to click OK. So that is the first part. The next part is going to be cutting out this center area. So we're going to kind of cut out this, looks like 39 millimeters and try and get that shape going here. So we'll come back here. We're gonna start a new sketch. Make sure your body is selected. Create new sketch. We're gonna choose the YZ plane again. Click OK. And then come back here to your model tree. You can click between the two panes here. I want you to click on your pad and press the space bar. When you press the space bar, now your three-dimensional shape is going to disappear and you can still see your master sketch. So then we'll go back into the sketch that we're currently drawing. And we are going to pull some external geometry with our external geometry tool. We're going to grab this vertice. We'll grab this vertice here. And we'll grab this one down in the bottom left. And then we'll connect them all with our polyline tool. And notice again, as soon as we click, our sketch is fully defined. Come back to our tasks pane. We'll close. So we were on our model tree. Now we'll come to our tasks. This is where our open sketch is. We'll close it. We're going to come to our pad, select our pad in our model tree again. Press the space bar. That'll make our model reappear. Then we'll select our sketch that we just made. And this time, instead of pad, we're going to come over here and we're going to use this tool, Pocket. And Pocket's going to create a little pocket in there. Again, we're going to use symmetry, so we'll select symmetric to plane. And we'll dimension that to be 39 millimeters. And there we go. Now we have something that's kind of starting to resemble this part here. Now you might have some lines coming across the face of your part where your extrusion was made. If you have those lines and you don't like them, what you can do is you can come up here to Edit, Preferences, come down on the left sidebar to Part Design, and check this bottom box that says Automatically Refine Model After Sketch-Based Operation. That will get rid of those lines and it'll look like mine. So check that box, click apply. Now you're not gonna see it happen in, in what you've done, but as soon as you do the next um, sketch-based feature, those lines will disappear. So let's create the next feature here. 
We'll make sure our body is selected. Come up here to create new sketch. We'll choose our YZ plane again. And then we will navigate to our model, click our latest feature, which is the pocket, and press the space bar. Space bar will make it disappear so we can see our sketch again. We'll click our active sketch. And I think we should add this top piece right here now. So we will pull our external geometry with our external geometry tool. Get these four vertices. That one's giving me a little trouble there. Sometimes you might have to zoom in a little bit. Zooming in helps. And then we'll use the polyline tool. Connect these all. Fully defined. We'll come back to our tasks pane. We'll close out of the sketch. Come to our pocket. We can press space bar to make everything reappear. We'll select our sketch again that we just created, and we're going to select the pad tool again. So let's go back to our sketch. So it looks like it's 11 millimeters from the end here, but what we need is this length right here. So what this length is, it looks like this length is 39 plus 7 plus 7 minus 11 minus 2 times 11, right? So Let's do this. Check it out. We'll open parentheses. We'll do 39 plus 7 plus 7, close parentheses, and then we'll do minus 2 times 11. Now you can see we've got the right size, but once we click symmetric to plane, voila, there we have it. So you can kind of see. These can take functions. They can take functions just like Excel can. Um, you can do, you know, I've never actually put a function in here that it wouldn't do. Um, you can do square root. Um, you can do exponents. Um, you know, I haven't tried to do any kind of integrals or anything like that. But, um, you know, hey, maybe give it a try. Let me know and see if it works. So we will select OK. And your lines should have disappeared if you changed your preferences. Um, and now we have something that's almost almost complete. We just have one, one more feature to add, and that's this hole right here. And I'm betting if you've been following along through this tutorial that you could probably add it yourself. So if you want to jump forward and try and do that, you can. Um, if you want to keep following along, we will finish that right now. So let's select our body. We will create new sketch. We will select the YZ plane, which is the plane we've been working on this whole time. And then we'll come back to our model tree, select our most recent feature edition, press the space bar, make it disappear with the space bar, select our sketch, and then it looks like our hole is going to be these four vertices right here. So we will pull the external geometry from this vertice here here whoops let's delete that line zoom in a little bit zooming always helps we'll grab our polyline tool connect all of our vertices Whoops, let's see what happened there. See if it, that's another thing. If it, if it was green and it turns white, that means you know that you didn't get a constraint and you have something loose. If, if you come back here to the tasks pane, you can see we have two degrees of freedom. That's because this point can move left and right and it can move up and down. And if that happens, it's really easy just to add the constraint. We can click the two points and make them coincident here with our coincident constraint and we're fully constrained again. So now that we're fully constrained, we can close this sketch. We'll press the space bar on the most recent feature to pull our, our model back. Select our sketch. Come up here to the pocket function. We'll do symmetric to plane. 
and this looks like it is 17 millimeters deep so we'll add that in here 17 millimeters and there we have it guys you've just created a part using a master sketch if you want that sketch to disappear you can just click it here on your model tree press the space bar and it'll disappear now there are are more complex parts where it's not going to be so easy to create a master sketch but this just gives you an idea of how to go about figuring out if you can use a master sketch I encourage you to try using a master sketch as much as possible and here's why because if I wanted to come back into this now this is the first time that we've talked about um, changing the dimensions of our model so this is again what makes it a parametric modeler is that I can come into this pocket now and it's 39 millimeters let's make that 30 millimeters did you see it change right there as soon as I changed it it's missing this part up here but that's an easy fix you can just press the space bar and they'll reappear but notice you can go in and you can change all kinds of stuff here Double click it in your model tree. We've got 31 millimeters. Let's change that to 50. Or let's do one. Oh, 501. No, let's let's just do one millimeter. All right, again, we can just go to our last feature, press the space bar, and everything will, will appear. But you can see now if you want to change something. And additionally, if you wanted to change your master sketch that's not an issue either you could come in here let's say we want to change this dimension to 50 and let's close that out now you can see it changed so you can go back in and change your model however you like if you you know 3d print something and you need something that's a little bit bigger or a hole a little bit in a different spot it's not a big deal it's not going to break your model so I hope you guys learned something if you liked this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I've got a lot, a lot of great ideas that I'm going to be bringing to tutorials. And uh, I hope you guys will stick around on the channel and uh, watch a few more things. Thanks, guys.